Hi, art friends. This is Mrs. McCumber. Today we're going to be creating a whimsical flower watercolor. What is fun about this is you get to use very wet watercolors, which create fizzy marks, which create their own colors. And then you get to outline after they're dry with any kind of pen that you have to create the black flower details on the outside, which actually builds your flowers into something more concrete rather than abstract. You also notice that you have a vase that's outlined with black markers. First step is to check out the materials. You're going to need watercolors. You're going to need watercolor brushes. Any size will do. You're going to need some rinse water. And you're going to need paper. If you have watercolor paper, this is really fantastic. This, however, is all done on um, construction paper. This is the regular sheet size. It's 12 by 18. Today, I'm going to paint with smaller papers so that I can get done quickly and get it recorded on YouTube in one spot. This is what you'll end up with in step one is a picture like this. After you add the marker detail, you'll end up with step two, look. You also can create a tabletop if you'd like at the end with a marker with a ruler. Notice that you have a vase. We're going to start with a vase. It could be a square, a rectangle. It could be um, whimsically invented like this one. The trick to this is to paint quickly and let the watercolor mingle together to create new colors. Remember that colors that touch on the color wheel, if you use these that are related, they make really pretty secondary tertiary colors. If you go across the street, you're going to get tannish and brownish colors, which you can see happened here. Okay, so colors across the street create browns, and colors next door to each other create beautiful colors. They're related, they're relatives. First step, I'm gonna use a very big brush because I'm always short on time with this. So you're going to create any shape of a container you want to do. Okay, you can even make it silly on top. Next, add a second color with it, or a third and let it fizz together. I'm adding some green or some yellow on there to make yellow green. Perhaps I could add some blue and just let it fizz. You can see it works its way to make interesting new shapes and watermarks. That's the effect you want. These projects remind me of Van Gogh famous artist is Van Gogh sunflowers. Next step, you're going to make round circles for the center of each one of these. Use any colors you want to make three, four, five circles, centers of your flowers. Now, if you like this style, you could change and not change, but you could do this Again, after you get the hang of it, now make some petals going out using acrylic paint, tempera paint, or whatever paint you have that is not see-through. This is transparent watercolor so that you get the layers showing up. You could also try it with thicker paint and on a canvas. So there's many ways to do the same style. Notice that I am laying down a second color around the first color. Right now it just looks like a mess. Next step it will become more apparent what it is. Let's move on to this color. I am missing turquoise. There's my turquoise. So I'm laying down petals that are going to fizz together and they fizz into the center. Perhaps, let's see, some yellow would be good here. And 
I'm going right next door for the next color. This is yellow, but I kind of had some green mixed in with it. The colors will make their own new colors as they touch. Lay down a petal beside the first. At least do two layers of colors, but not really layers, just let them touch. Okay. It's orange. It's kind of a burnt orange because it's picking up the red. I'm working as quickly as I can. I would take more time, but today I am in a rush to get this to show up for you. I think what I'll do is lay down purple beside the orange. Now you can see it's going to make a brown color. Purple and orange are kind of across on the color wheel. When they touch, they make a new color that's brown. Notice how the fizz watermarks are happening finish up this last one. You'll notice that your colors overlap each other. So some flowers are going to be on the top and some are going to be on the bottom. Overlapping is an art term or art element we talk about. Now green and purple really don't like each other. So they'll create a brown too. They also are across the street. Let's go with a blue. Next to the green. Whoops. Okay, now you can see how the colors are fizzing together. I'm going to switch to my next one. So the next step, we're going to color, not color, but use your marker with the watermarks. Wherever there's a fizzy mark, we just outline. Notice same thing with your container. This one has a flower I haven't done yet. Now, if you make a mistake and you have splat marks, you can outline those and all of a sudden they become falling leaves or leaves on the table that have fallen. So the first step is to go and go around the outside of each one of your petals and outline. And just outline the fizzy marks that they make. You can exaggerate the tips if you want. This flower is overlapping this one, so when I bump into it, I'm going to pick up my marker. You also can look for places where the two colors have fizzed together and follow those. So work your way around your flower and outline where you have watermarks, where the colors come together. And then you can look here and look at your center and fizz and outline. Just use your marker following these lines to make interesting lines. And if you want, you can go all the way around. Just have fun doodling. Let the colors fizz marks come to life by outlining with black or brown marker. Next you can outline or just draw in your stems. Think about how the flower would be heavy, so you would curve it down. How it would be standing up, so you curve it towards the vase. Notice you're not going inside the vase because you wouldn't be able to see that. Notice how the vase is outlined on the outside and then the fizzy marks are outlined. And you can go and find new ones that you left blank until you are happy with your result. Here's some more fizz marks. Also this one, I didn't really finish the center of this. So I'll go back and finish the fizz marks that are interesting to me. And then I can kind of look and see where this would maybe end and the center would begin. And then I can come inside, find more of these fizzy marks. So it's a very abstract 
piece of art. It has doodling in it, which is very peaceful and pleasant. It has the appreciation of the colors. Oh, look, see, I made a mistake here. Not a problem. There's never mistakes in art. I got paint on that on accident. So I'm going to turn it into a petal just by outlining. So this is a very forgiving project. If you make mistakes, there really aren't mistakes. I always say in art, no such thing as a mistake. Just turn it into a beautiful oops. Another fun book you can read. If you would like, you could draw in leaves. You could have cracks in the vase. You could have a tabletop. Use a straight edge or a ruler to make the lines. So you can use your imagination. Even if you hold your paper up and it runs and makes drips, you can use these and turn them into part of your project to where it looks like you meant to do that. Don't forget to sign it like an artist. Okay, that's always fun. I hope you have enjoyed this adventure with watercolors and letting watercolors behave as they should, all mingling together, having a great time. Enjoy your day. Thank you.